let's take up the next question 85 year old woman has got multiple strokes and uh, she is in the surgical intensive care unit after emergent laparoscopic cholecystectomy for acute cholecystitis and this is the typical appearance of her CT and uh, she has got pH of 7.49 and uh, the partial carbon dioxide pressure is 30 millimeters of mercury and she has a copious purulent secretions on suctioning then what is the most important treatment that you need to basically deliver so basically a elderly hospitalized patient who is in an altered mental status due to past stroke on endotracheal intubation prolonged recumbency is at the great risk of developing aspiration pneumonia which is responsible for all those purulent secretions so clindamycin and levofloxacin are considered to be the drugs uh, that you need to keep in mind to manage this clinical condition a 37 year old multiparous woman who is obese presents with severe epigastric pain the sodium is low 128 potassium is 3.8 and all other investigation values have been given and wbc is significantly high which is 14000 now her ct abdomen is showing presence of edematous pancreas this is all pancreas edematous so she has got pancreatitis so you should know what are the ransom's criteria at admission and at 48 hours that is the challenge of this question so her LDH levels are expected to be more than 250 um, is the one of the criteria in acute pancreatitis in the ransom's scoring 62 year old vascular surgeon is found to have this lesion which is a aneurysm of the iota but this is only 4.5 centimeters so when do you want to operate the aortic aneurysm typically aneurysms that are 4 to 5.4 should be followed on ultrasound or ct every 6 to 12 months that is the typical protocol which you have to be very much sure about 39 year old is having mental retardation abdominal pain radiating to the back and the ct indicate the following condition the CT and uh, what is the next step in the management so um, uh, basically whenever you have any patient with uh, certain comorbid illnesses uh, uh, and uh, uh, you always have a balance between medical and surgical management so this question is all about which one to be taken um, based upon the risk and the wish of the patient wishes of the patient huh? so i leave the literature for you to review now a 33 year old comes with abdominal pain abdominal pain is crampy and very diffuse there is a history of chronic pancreatitis and uh, her temperature is 37 and uh, laparoscopy is typically showing presence of additions peritoneal additions so there are the adhesive bands which are being shown on the laparoscopy a 50 year old with 4 year history 4 month history of refractory duodenal ulcers in spite of maximal medical therapy, you give pantocid, you give rantidin, everything you give, but still it's not uh, improving. So, what do you want to basically do? Parietal cell vagotomy is considered to be the management of choice. 62 year old, he reports that he has moderate intermittent bloating, flatulence, diffuse abdominal cramping pain. ESR, C reactive protein are both elevated and the CD abdomen is being taken so what do you see in that so there is a formation of an abscess so um, typically the patient has got diverticulitis and the symptoms are bloating flatulence irregular movements and uh, 
One of the complications of the diverticulitis is the insufficient of the pus and localizing of localization of that leading to development of the abscess which is one of the complications. 78 year old women noticed maroon blood in her stool and her history has psoriasis degenerative joint disease and her colonoscopy is being shown lot of rooms are there in that like all your rooms. So uh, what is the likelihood? Most likely it is diverticulosis, cancer or polyp, then angiodysplasia. It is in that order the possibility of the diagnosis for that maroon colored stool. So 28 year old brought to emergency and uh, he sustained injury on the neck which is being shown. Multiple injuries, neck injuries had went to zone 1, 2 and 3. So it is a zone 2 injury and zone 2 injury requires surgical exploration is the management. So zone 2 penetrating injury. So what is a zone 2? Zone 2 is the area between the angle of the mandible and the cricoid cartilage. That area if you are having an injury it is called zone 2. Why do you need to do surgical exploration for zone 2? Because that is the zone where you have the internal and external carotid arteries, jugular veins, pharynx, larynx, recurrent laryngeal nerve, esophagus and all these crucial structures. A 76 year old is having diffuse watery diarrhea for 3 days after a Rooks and my procedure and her temperature is 39 degrees and there is a diffuse abdominal tenderness and CD scan is being typically shown. So what is it most likely to be? So it is the Clostridium difficile uh, which is a gram positive organism leading to pseudomembranous colitis and it is a cytotoxic assay, cytotoxicity assay which is considered with a gold standard for the diagnosis of the Clostridium difficile infection is what you need to basically remember. 45 year old and he is experiencing the episodes where he feels very hot and begins sweating and few days of non-bloody diarrhea and that always results on its own and the x-ray of the chest is being shown. So typically it is a peribronchial mass. So which mass in the lung can lead to diarrhea equal to carcinoid. So it is a carcinoid and you basically treat it by giving that uh, uh, diarrhea caused by the carcinoid is treated by giving somatostradin. Somatostradin is considered to be the treatment. Very good to see Priya who is online. Uh, yeah. Now in the photo given, what is this position which is done for tonsillectomy? It is basically called rose position. You will keep a sandbag under the patient's shoulder blade and for a patient with kyphosis or a stiff neck, raise the headpiece of the table and rose position is contraindicated in the patient who is having Down syndrome. If the examiner wants to really complicate, forget about rose, he can say this given position on the operating table is contraindicated in which condition? Turner, Down, Klein filter, etc. So that way. Now, with this part of cholesteatoma which is being marked in the photo, what is this part? So cholesteatoma has got various parts. There is a bone, there is a fibrous stroma, there is a matrix, there is a keratin mass. Now what is this test which is being shown? So this is basically called Cottle's test. Uh, uh, you will move the cheek down laterally while the patient is breathing quietly. If the nasal airway improves on the tested side, there is going to be positive and an abnormality in the valve, which is called Cottle's test. Now, what is the structure marked in this photo? These are all good questions in ENT at least. So, it is a quadrangular membrane. This is the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, paraglottic space cricoid cartilage, ventricle and this is the quadrangular membrane. 
Now the eye test which is being shown in the picture is used whenever the patient is having which problem? Whenever they have dry eyes. So it's the Shremus test to know whether lacrimation is happening or not. This type of fracture which is the most common fracture is basically a longitudinal fracture. 80% of temporal bone fractures are all longitudinal fractures is what you have to basically appreciate. From there it is this acoustic neuroma commonly arise from the inferior vestibular nerve. From there it is the water acoustic emissions arise. They arise from outer hair cells. The endolym which is present in scala media who secretes it? It is the stria vascularis which produces the endolym. Brown sign, where do you see, doc? Glomus jugular. So, pulsation of the glomus tumor in the middle ear, whenever you apply the positive pressure to the external auditory canal using the otoscope, is called brown sign, is what need to be remembered. Now, this 32 year old has undergone MRI. Her interoperative findings have been shown. What is the most likely diagnosis? So, here you are finding the placenta penetrating into the myometrium, which is then called placenta percrita. Then, uh, a 24 year old primary gravida, 8 weeks of gestation, presence with headache and body aches. What you are finding is the ring forms of the malarial parasite. So, she needs to be treated with chloroquine. 25 year old is using the IUCD contraception. So, what is the most common complication of that? That is bleeding. 35 year old women with primary infertility and the mass per abdomen and MRI pelvis is being shown. So, what is the most probable diagnosis? It is endometrioma, the axial T1 weighted image, which has got a high signal, is endometrioma. The pseudomyxoma peritoneae which you are seeing is a complication of which ovarian tumor typically? It is mucinous cystadenoma. A 30 year old woman with a history of dilatation and curate touch. She underwent diagnostic hysteroscopy which is showing a lot of adhesions which is Asherman syndrome. The complication is highest whenever you do the procedure. Whenever you do the DNC for postpartum hemorrhage the chances of developing adhesions is higher. Than when you do the DNC for MTP. 35 year old comes to the clinic with amenorrhea, occasional headache, her BP is 130 by 70, and typically you find a pituitary mass which is classically treated by transphenoidal resection, is considered to be the most frequent surgical approach. 30 year old undergoing caesarean section has this typical entity, what type of anesthesia technique that you need to basically choose for this important clinical condition, look at the heart and decide. So general anesthesia, what you are seeing in that is rib notching, rib notching and the three sign, three, three sign. Rib notching and three sign, coactation of iota. So there's a reason general anesthesia is the best one. 35 year old, primary gravida, passing grape like lesions, and ultrasound is showing snowstorm. So the best treatment for a molar pregnancy is suction and evacuation. 27 year old has got primary infertility and uh, her. Uh, uh, Lab findings have been shown and she has got multiple cysts in the ovary, classically is a case of polycystic ovarian syndrome. 77 year old with shortness of breath and she says that she is unwell for 8 weeks. She got her menopause at 52 years. CT abdomen and chest x-rays, you find a massive pleural effusion with the ovarian mass. So what is it? Uh, this is the ovarian mass. So, what is it? It is the ovarian cancer that presents with plural effusion. 48 year old with intermenstrual bleeding. 
she has three children and used progesterone only pill for five years and she has underwent the ultrasound but she is 48 year old with intermenstrual bleeding most common causes it can be atrophic vaginitis but in this case endometrial polyp is seen there is abdominal swelling 10 months she has to wear large clothes and people have asked her that is she pregnant which is very distressing she has been with her partner from 7 years and not used any contraception so there is a big mass that is being found so what is it it is a uterine leomyoma is what you have to basically recognize 28 year old attends clinic after abdominal abnormal smear test underwent colonoscopy and uh, she did not have any postcoital bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding multiple sexual partners so typically the lesion is being shown what is the appropriate pr procedure you need to do large loop excision of the transformation zone uh, given the findings that you have on the colposcopy then a 59 year old woke up with blood on her nightdress which was bright red but not heavy the bleeding recurred her last period was at 49 10 years back she is sexually active but noticed vaginal dryness recently so what is the most likely cause for her to bleed the reason is atrophic vaginitis is a, a common reason for development of the postcoital bleeding especially in the menopausal women who have got a very dry um, uh, vagina with um, uh, the trauma caused by the intercourse 19 year old in her first pregnancy uh, presents with the lesions which are being shown on the labia herpes so if she labors within six weeks a cesarean section is the one which is basically recommended now a 33 year old two-day history of itching and uh, on soles on of her feet and the palms and her LFT have been shown what is your advice so typically there are three to four conditions for the jaundice and pruritus in pregnancy the lesions which are being shown here are classical of pruritic articarial papules and clots of pregnancy pup how to differentiate pup from cholestasis of pregnancy from HELLP from fatty liver of pregnancy you have to do there is a table in uh, data huh? you need to master that definitely one question will come so this is all the story of the image based questions for this week uh, need PG mock test I try my best to come down for discussion we are handling too many things now like home health care and so many other areas we are opening in many countries the geriatric care at home so that's the reason I had been too much traveling but I try my best because teaching is my first life um, so I too miss the students a good number of times but uh, definitely I'll make sure to come and deliver at least a discussion on the image based questions good luck for your exam prepare well